Hello ladies and gentlemen, Catholics, Orthodox, Oriental Orthodox, even though I don't have to say anything about to the Orthodox or the Oriental Orthodox, because they do keep the traditional, according to their right, to their churches of the Lenten fast. Um, so really the message is, to the Catholics, to the Latins, as the East would call us, the Latins. Now, the Latins have abandoned, not the people, every innovation comes from top. Every heresy comes from the top, from hierarchs, from priests, from monks. Um, and many popes have made... Um, uh, in, in, in fake false compassion uh, has, have loosened the discipline of the Lenten fast. I made at least two videos on fasting in the, uh, previously on my channel and I will put the links, links to them. Uh, one which is, has the discipline and, uh, and the form and it's like an hour and a half long video. I'm not going to repeat much of it. So you should watch it for a bit more detail. Anyways, so this is, we are in the Lenten season. Today is the uh, Friday after Ash Wednesday, according to the Latin West calendar. Um, so we have started the fast, and it is a fast and abstinence. It is not a time of eating and drinking, uh, because tomorrow you shall die. Well, tomorrow we could as well die. We never know. You don't know the a day or the hour. Therefore, like the people of Nineveh, when uh, Jonah was sent to them, because they were afraid of the judgment, the rightful wrath of God, the judgment of God upon them, the king decreed a fast. Um, and the people, not only for the people, even the animals had to endure the fast. And God saw them and relented. And Jonah was not a happy, happy camper. He actually wanted the Ninevites destroyed. But anyways, and of course, Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, uh, meaning no food to people, no food. It says no food or drink. Did Jesus not drink water for 40 nights? He's a divine person. He might have. Um, but again, the word drink, it could mean as well an alcoholic, like a wine as a drink. Um, uh, Moses for, fasted on the Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights. And uh, the ancient church, like the first, f first or second centuries, there were kind of not discrepancies, well, different traditions. Some churches like a, ate nothing for like say three days before Easter Sunday. That was their severe fast. Um, and some for a week, some for 40 days. But overall, within the first two, three centuries, that's it. Everybody fasted at least the 40 days of Lent. Um, and uh, the earliest uh, document, one of the earliest documents called the Didache, which is each actually even older than some of the New Testament writings. It's the Didache is officially called the Teaching of the Twelve Apostles, or I believe so. Anyways, in it, it actually tells, reports the custom, which means it's an apostolic tradition, which was handed down by the apostles that all Christians fast, meaning no food and probably not even drink water every Wednesday and Friday throughout the year. And they would break their fast, so it would be called breakfast, break their fast after sunset or vespers. Um, that was the tradition. That was immediate, Wednesdays and Friday, universal. Um, now, the, the th length of time of the Easter season varied at the beginning, the first one or two centuries, but after that, 40 days is the 40 days. 
Um, now, in the East, I mentioned that previously in the previous video, Saturdays and Sundays are excluded from the fast, not the abstinence. Now, what's the difference? Abstinence is the word for abstaining, meaning not consuming. Now, traditionally, throughout the church, East and West, Christians, following the tradition they have received, would abstain, meaning not consume, throughout the fasting season, uh, meat, dairy, so that includes all kinds of dairy, cheeses, butters, uh, whatever, milk, um, and eggs. Uh, in the East, in the Byzantines, they actually even forbid wine, and I believe olive oil as well. Um, but that has been the tradition. This is what you abstain from. Let's look at it in the, in the West, for example. Up to the last, I think, like from three centuries ago, two, three centuries ago, they started loosening. Oh, well, you can have like a couple of meals. Uh, well, you can have maybe, maybe just, so now a lot of traditional, traditional Catholics talking about the traditional Lenten fast, they're actually talking about, well, I'm going to abstain from uh, meat on Fridays or just meat. Uh, now it's just meat on Fridays. <laughs> now it's a joke of a fast, honestly. Uh, traditionally, well, so-called traditionally, and like up to Pius XII, there's uh, uh, no meat uh, during Lent uh, and uh, one main meal a day and two little meals throughout the day, which don't add up to the one meal, which is kind of a bit of a, a joke because I can have a tremendously big meal for the main meal and then two little ones, which don't equal the one humongous meal, which would make me full all day long which is a joke of a fast. No. Hey, YouTube guy, what is, what, how was it, uh, how was the fast done in the West? Well, in the West uh, and in the East, actually, well, there was no food till sunset, till after the office of Vespers, which would be sung or prayed around 6 p.m. or so. There's a story in, uh, there's a book published by Penguin Publishing. You can probably find it on Amazon or wherever. Uh, it's called The Two Lives of Charlemagne, uh, Charles the Great, the Emperor of the West. Now, uh, in The Two Lives of Charlemagne, uh, like there's two authors, that's why it's called The Two Lives of Charlemagne. Anyways, one of the authors, uh, I can't remember, I think it's a monk, one of the monks. He recalls an incident where Charlemagne, the king, and it is the Lenten season, so he started, he broke his fast before sunset and he was rebuked. The emperor was rebuked by the archbishop for breaking, for eating before sunset because nobody ate before sunset. That would mean you have not fasted. You broke your fast. Um, and uh, anyways, Charlemagne explained to the, to the bishop is that, look, all these people, all my courtiers and servants and whatever nobility, none of them eats before I eat. So if I wait till sunset and I eat and then the next rank of nobility eats and then they eat until finally get down to the servants to eat, it'll be so late at night, it would be cruel for them to do so. And that was justified. So the, the monk writing the, the story talks about the wisdom of Charlemagne. So, but the point of the story is that to show you that even the emperor, Charlemagne, that was the tradition, you do not eat till sunset, till after Vespers. And the same story is in St. Thomas Aquinas, which talks about, again, Fasting meaning no food, and no dairy, no eggs, and no meats. Fish is accepted. I believe in the East, the Byzantines forbid fish as well. Um, uh, and uh, um, so St. Thomas says, again, the fast is broken traditionally after 
Vespers. Then he said, well, if this is not done, the earliest you can eat is the hour of noon, which is an office, which is said at 3 p.m. And he said, you don't eat before 3 p.m. Is that because at 3 p.m. Jesus died on the cross? So you do not indulge yourself by eating and drinking while Christ is hanging on the cross, suffering for you. That would be like spitting in the face of Jesus. Uh, I mean, he didn't say that, but that's what I say. That would be like spitting in the face of Jesus. So, and not, I'm not saying that I'm keeping that fast. I'll tell you what I'm doing in a second. But uh, so the discipline was, and it should voluntarily, we should try our best to adhere to it, is that you don't eat anything till at least 3 p.m. And at 3 p.m. you have your one single meal a day. And that was the discipline. One meal a day. No snacking. Uh, well, no, not even collations, two little snacks throughout the day. And actually, in the, dis the, in the loosening of the discipline, I think in my previous video, I actually mentioned which popes do, did what. They first allowed one collation, one snack, before the main meal or after the main meal, and that was it. And then they did two collations, meaning like two little snacks and one main meal. And then, of course, by the time of Paul VI, hey, you know, eat, drink, and be merry, and just uh, you have to fast for an hour before going to Mass. Meaning I can go to, to have a big double mac and fries and cook, and just out the, outside the door of the church, maybe 10, 15 minutes before, I walk in, by the time communion comes, I have already fasted for an hour. I am such a good Christian. I am such a disciplined warrior of Christ. Yeah. That's a freaking joke, okay? Now, if you, if you follow that rule, you are just basically not... Don't think of yourself as you are fasting. And don't talk, be such so legalistic. Well, canon law says, and canon 557, 578 says, we, can, we have to fast on this. These are just... Um, first of all, the modern code of canon law is basically... Uh, simplification uh, of the traditional one and actually even the 1917 code of canon law was a compilation of a vast array of canonical uh, rulings so it, even the 1917 would not stand by itself it is based on a big body of laws uh, which come to us from the fathers and the apostles and the saints throughout the centuries so and uh, so I'm going to end this section and then I'm going to just mention about the pre-Lenten days. There is the, in the West, there are three, three Sundays. So again, um, well, actually, I'll, I'll tell you what I, what I do, because now I, I did keep that fast uh, for several years, um, maybe up to four or five years ago. I was keeping maybe for maybe four or five years. I kept truly this fast, not to be proud. I actually, it was very, very difficult the first few days and then your body just gets used to it. And go to YouTube and watch uh, one meal a day videos about how the health benefits and the intermittent fasting and health benefits of a single meal a day. Well, the church did that 2000 years ago. We didn't wait for science to tell us that fasting or intermittent fasting with no snacking not only is it good for your brain, for your body, for your health, your intellectual acumen, your alertness, all of this. People think, oh, you're not going to eat, you're going to be so depressed, so tired. So on the contrary, actually, when I fast, I have way more energy, way more alertness. Instead of my body constantly digesting food, people don't know until they try. So yeah, the church from 2,000 years ago, yeah, hey, one meal a day no snacking and that's it for 40 days that is your lenten fast and that's one of the fasts there are other fasts which have been again <coughs> ignored in the west they are partially kept still in the east um and um so what i'm doing this time so as i uh, 
uh, as a recap for this section and then I'm going to tell you how to get into it in a, in, a, in a gradual way maybe next year or even you can start it doing it this year slowly you've got so 40 days or whatever it is till Lent and how is the count well the counting is 40 days as I said Sundays there is no fast you are still abstaining you're still not eating these things no dairy no meat no cheeses no uh, eggs so you're still abstaining on Sunday but you are not fasting so you can eat like 50 meals during Sunday it doesn't matter but you're still not eating these things you're still abstaining till the feast of the resurrection Sunday or if you go a uh, midnight mass after the mass eat and drink and be merry because Christ has risen um, now what am I doing this year because as I said I haven't not done this in several years um, so in the morning, I have, and this is only what it, what is it today? Friday. So uh, I've got a little phone call here. Doesn't matter. Friday. So I did Wednesday, Thursday, and today is the Friday, the third day. So what am I doing? What am I? What am I doing? I start off. I just get a little 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 dish, like small thingy, like that. Uh, put lots of nuts in it, almonds, um, uh, almonds, walnuts, uh, Brazil nuts, um, uh, um, macadam, um, whatever, whatever, a bunch of nuts, um, and uh, two or three, um, um, one fig, two or three um, uh, dates, and a little digestive, uh, it's called the digestive biscuits. Or any kind of a, a cookie you can find. I can read the ingredients on the cookie. Or a muffin, a little piece of muffin. A small, not a big jumbo piece of 2,000 calorie muffin. No, you know, a little, little chunk of it. As long as it doesn't have, again, butter or milk or whatever. So, and then I just make my coffee, no milk. Drinking my coffee and eating my nuts. Drinking my coffee and eating my nuts. Eat, drinking my coffee and eating my nuts. And that's it. Um, I was, and this one is actually a fulfillment of a vow I made to, to Christ that this year, if a certain thing happened, I would do this. At least uh, the so-called fake traditional, which meaning at least two call, like one main meal, meal a day, day and a couple of snacks if needed. So in the mornings, as I said, I just have my coffee and a bunch of nuts. And that's it. And last two nights, basically, I had one main meal a day around whatever it was, 6 or 7 p.m. And some tea after that. And that was it till next day. And actually, I have now it is about uh, 2 p.m. my time. And uh, I had my coffee around like 8 in the morning with the nuts. And I'm not hungry. Don't ask me why. This is the your body would get used to it. Um, and as I said, you should actually try throughout the year. Uh, so St. Thomas would say, I broke my fast. I'm not even fasting because I ate something before 3 p.m. But since there is no law on the books anymore for this, uh, I hope God accepts it. And uh, next year, I will even skip the, uh, the nuts in the morning thing. Um, but uh, so this is what I'm doing and as I said throughout the year we all following a hundred percent guaranteed apostolic tradition of fasting again no meat no dairy no uh, at least no meat at least no meat but if you can go all three no dairy no uh, uh, no eggs on every single Wednesday and Friday and again restricting yourself to one main meal a day and if you want do the two little snacks thingy if you can just do it one meal a day this is in the Didache one of the most ancient Christian documents some of the fathers and ancients wanted to include it included it in the New Testament scriptures others said well we don't have an author for it so now it's very important it's sacred it's holy but we cannot say it's divine so um, that's that about the fasting what 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 to do what to abstain and um, and uh, some people say well how how do I get into it how do how do I 
and the beauty of it in traditional liturgy, so the real Roman rite, the so-called Latin Mass, or any of the ancient Latin rites, which many of them have got, be, gone into disuse, unfortunately, uh, it matches very well the Byzantine rite. For example, I am not familiar with what the Coptic rite does or, uh, or the Armenian rite does, but for example, the Byzantine has, it eases people into the Lenten fast. Instead of suddenly, you're eating, drinking, whatever, and then suddenly, boom, from one day to the next, you're no this, no, 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 no meat, no eggs, no dairy, no fish, no wine, no butter, no olive oil. Like, whoa, it's a shocker, huh? So you have to, the church knew human nature. You have to gradually introduce uh, the pain, <laughs> introduce the discipline, because otherwise we are trying to curb the appetites, gluttony, and we're trying to subdue uh, the natural and good urges, as long as they're fulfilled in a natural and a good manner, and not in a perverse ver manner. Uh, uh, so, so in the East, and then I'm going to get into the West, and that will be the video for the day. And do as you please. As I said, I have way more detail on the, the other video about even the Ash Wednesday. The ashes, they form, it's an Old Testament, I can't remember which book of the Old Testament. And they said people who took these ashes formed in this Hebrew letter, ancient Hebrew, actually this letter is the cross. And the people who received the ashes were saved. So anyways, you can watch the video. I'll, I'll place a link for it. Anyway, so for the, uh, for the Byzantine rite, the Eastern Byzantine rite, I don't know about the Armenian or the uh, Coptic or the Ethiopic or the Syriac. For the Byzantine, they have, again, they introduce people into the fasting. Um, so there's a, a Sunday, I think two Sundays, two Sundays before, uh, because they start their fast from the Monday. So, um, so uh, there's a, this one it's called the Meat Fair Sunday. So this is the last Sunday where uh, Christians, they call it Orthodox Christians, well, let's call it Byzantine Rite Christians, uh, are allowed to eat meat. And after that, they, are, they can no longer eat meat. So after this Meat Fair Sunday, so it's the last day before, eat, before Easter for eating meat. And after that, they fast from meat, so meaning they abstain from meat for the rest of the week. And, after, and the week after, so now their body is getting, okay, I can still drink my milk, I can eat my eggs, I can have my butter, I can have my wine, I can have my oils but no meat, all right. And my fish, but no meat, fine. And then the Sunday after, they call it Forgiveness Sunday or Cheese Fair Sunday. And it's the final day before uh, of pre-Lent, which is well we have in the West, pre-Lent, which is the last, which is the Sunday after Meat Fair Sunday. And that is the Sunday uh, the la before the Great Lent or the Great Fast, uh, it's called the Great Fast because it's the big one. It's the big fast, Lent. Um, so it is the last day that dairy products were permitted to be eaten before Easter. So first they start off with no meat. So first, the, the week before that, they can eat and drink as, like, as long as they like. Then the Sunday comes, okay, that's the last Sunday they can eat your meat. After that, no meat for the week. And then, but you can still have your eggs and butter and milk and oil and this and that. Come this Sunday, this Forgiveness Sunday is the last Sunday. You can have your, your meat and your... Uh, um, so yeah, that would be the last Sunday to eat your meat, uh, your uh, cheeses and milks and all that. And after that, bam, Monday is 
Lent, the Great Lent. For the Byzantines, they, fa they fast and abstain uh, Monday through Friday. Saturday and Sunday are excluded as a fast as fasting days but they still abstain so they still don't eat their meat they don't drink their milk they don't eat their cheeses they don't even some eat, don't eat their fish and so forth so abs abstaining is throughout the season but the restricting yourself to one meal a day or whatever the fasting part is excluded saturday and sunday in the west it is excluded on sunday so that's why we get the 40 days of fast even though it sounds actually more than 40 because Sundays are excluded from fasting abstaining is a different story they're still keeping it and in the West entered in the real Roman Rite not the fake fabrication of Paul the Sixth of the 1960s the Protestantized watered down made up by committee liturgy the fake Mass of Vatican II, traditionally, and the real Roman Rite, which comes to us from the Apostles and the Fathers throughout the West. There were three Sundays before Lent. One is called Septuagesima Sunday, which means the 70th. It's not exactly 70 days before Easter, but on average. After that, there is the Sexa, Sexagesima, which is again 60th. And then the Sunday after that, there's the Quinquagesima, which is the 50th. And then, um, and then the, then the, then there is the 40th, Quadragesima. Quadragesima Sunday is the 40th. So for 40 days, and then you get, you get uh, Easter Sunday, 40th, because it's 40 days. So now we have, and of course, uh, I can't remember which Pope added Wednesday as the beginning of the fast, Ash Wednesday, before Quadragesima Sunday, the 40th Sunday, is because to have an exact 40 days of fast and abstinence with excluding Sundays. And as I said, Sundays, you're still abstaining, but you're not restricted in the amount of food and what you eat and when you eat. So now we have three Sundays before Ash Wednesday for the Western Christians, for the Roman Rite Christians who want to follow the real Roman Rite, not the made up, made up, Protestantized, Mickey Mouse, watered down liturgy, which you find in most churches and loved by Francis, our beloved Pope who accepts every form of novelty and paganism in the liturgy, except his most hated thing is keeping the apostolic rite. That's bad. Keeping the ancient liturgy of comes to us from the apostles and fathers and saints of the church of the West. This is horrible. But bringing Pacamama, paganism into the liturgy, bird feathers, shamans, Jumping around, Protestants, rainbows and flags. That's good. This is the spirit of Vatican II. This is the spirit of the liturgy of the living church of this new springtime. Of course, we have to uh, reject all of that and we adhere to the real Roman rite or the real one of the Eastern rites. Again, too bad a lot of the Catholic Eastern churches imitate like a bunch of slaves a bunch of lab dogs every single novelty that emanates from post-conciliar rome oh other girls well rome said it's okay so i guess we byzantines which have zero tradition of this actually the west has zero tradition of this nobody has tradition of this because it's a total innovation oh let's do it Oh, they're facing the people. Let's turn our, like the Chaldeans, let's turn our altars and have the priest facing the congregation. Instead of facing God, facing the east, the direction where Christ rose towards the east and from whence he shall come. Like the angel said, 
You see in Christ go there, he's, he's going to come like, like lightning comes from the east. This is where, why we look for the coming of Christ. We're looking towards the east. The priest is looking towards the east. We're looking towards heaven. Anyways, that's another story. So now you have, now do it yourself. Be inventive. So not suddenly Ash Wednesday comes and says, Oh my God, I have to not eat meat and dairy and milk and cheese and eggs. And what am I going to eat? Is there anything to eat? What am I, how am I going to live? I'm going to starve. No, no, you're not going to starve. Trust me. You're not going to starve. There's a billion things to eat. Go get a vegan cookbook, you know. Um, just avoid the soy. So now you have three Sundays. Septuagesima, 70th, Sexagesima, 60th, Quinquagesima, 50th, and then, bam, Ash Wednesday. So you can do maybe, maybe the first week, you can invent your own. You can do maybe if we're going to abstain from, say, milk, uh, cheese, uh, I mean, dairy and eggs. Well, here are three items. Three items we, there is no law to it, but to accustom your body towards it. Maybe, the, say, the first Sunday, so after Septuagesima Sunday, well, let's say, okay, I'm going to give up uh, whichever, maybe ease yourself into it. Meat or milk or dairy. So choose something. So say, after sex, I just accept a just on Sunday, the 17th Sunday, I'm going to give up, say, I'm just throwing it out there, say, I'm going to give up uh, meat. All right. So, but I'm going to still have my egg, my eggs and cheeses and butters and whatever. Okay. So, and and cakes up to the next Sunday, which is the uh, Sexagesima Sunday, which is the 60th. Okay, the Monday after that, okay, what am I going to give now? Okay, so now I'm already not eating meat. Now I'm going to ease into, say, maybe eggs. Okay, I'm not going to eat eggs from now for the quick Quinquagesima, for the Sexagesima Sunday. Yeah. So I'm not going to eat eggs. So from the Monday, no eggs. So now already I'm off of meat for one week and come the week after, now we're off of eggs and meat. But I'm still eating, drinking, and then come the Queen Quagesima, Sunday the 50th, Sunday. So, okay, now I'm off of meat, I'm off of eggs. I'm, these are just suggestions, I'm throwing them out. Okay, now there's, oh my God, the Wednesday's coming. What can I do? Of course, Tuesday, Fat Tuesday was traditionally meaning the last day of meat. Again, you can maybe put the cheeses at the beginning and keep the meat at the end. Whatever works for you. So uh, maybe after that last uh, Queen Quagesima, I say, well, you know what? Maybe I'll give up uh, cheese and butter, but I'm going to still drink my milk. And then you've got three days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Monday, Tuesday, you're still eating and drinking your milk. And come Wednesday, off of the milk. So now you, you, you accustomed your body. You accustomed your body from no meat for a week, no eggs for a week. So now you have no eat meat and eggs. And then the third uh, few days after that, no dairy uh, no, um, what did I say? No cheese for two, three days, two days. And then come Ash Wednesday, easy peasy. Bam, you're already like, now you're just already into, okay, fine. Now I'm just going to give up the final thing, which is milk. Now, again, over the these last three, four Sundays, you should accustom yourself to reducing the amount of food, trying to restrict yourself maybe to two meals a day or one meat and two little snacks, no snacking in between. Until you get to that Ash Wednesday, then you can follow the ancient fast. These are just suggestions, but and what, again, there are a ton of reasons why we fast. First of all, we, we have to offer a sacrifice to God. We have done so much evil, so much evil, 
And anybody, I think in the scripture says, anybody who says, I have not sinned is a liar. I did not sin is a liar. So if you think that you are sinless, you have done nothing wrong, well, uh, look in the mirror very, very carefully. Because only Satan would say that. Only Satan would think, I have done nothing wrong. I deserve everything I ask for. I have done nothing wrong. I rebelled against this, this God and I want my throne. I deserve it. I'm the most beautiful angel. I'm the most powerful being created. So, no, 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 no. So you have to think, yes, we do. Even sins of desire, sins of anger, losing of temper, even these are minor sins. But still, we all have something to, uh, uh, to uh, in Arabic it says, تكفر عنا, تكفر, to, 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 to do reparation for, to, 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 to do something to repair this evil in you and in, like first of all, to repair it in you and do acts which are contrary to what, you, what your, your sin is and giving up food and not just food again and again Jesus says like the when the the apostles couldn't get rid of the, some demons he said well these ones don't leave except by prayer and fasting too prayer and fasting so you cannot fast and not pray because if you just fast you're just doing the physical mechanical thing and just your mind is still indulging in sin, you're doing evil things, you're not praying, thanking God that you're even alive, that you're even breathing, that you have something to eat, then your fast is useless. Might as well just go pig out. Don't even bother fasting if you do not even attempt to pray and to reform your life and to conform to the will of Christ and do his will and do as he said Jesus said, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect so it is hard it is impossible to be perfect because only God is perfect but we are to strive if Jesus himself the immaculate the perfect the sinless God himself the all holy fasted 40 days and 40 nights and even him the devil tried to tempt what about us weak human beings so um, ignore what the code of canon law the current code of canon law requires us to fast two whole days for the whole freaking year ash wednesday and good friday other than why otherwise eat and drink and be merry And then the new law of the West abstain from meat only on Fridays in Lent. Whoa! But I can eat, but I can eat like a rack of lamb every day, Monday through Saturday, or Monday through uh, every single day of the week except Friday. Okay, I can do that. There are no problems because I'm not even fasting. I'm eating like a pig throughout Lent. Except for Friday, I'm, 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 I'm still eating like a pig, but I'm not eating meat. You know, maybe I'll be eating like, you know, four cakes or something. And uh, I don't know, whatever else. But this is not a, this is a joke. So, yeah, if you want to imitate Christ, if you want to imitate the apostles, if you want to imitate early Christians, even up to the last couple of centuries. This is how they fasted. People say, well, life is too hard these days. Uh, the popes had to, uh, they had to uh, loosen the discipline of the church. Otherwise, people couldn't handle it. What are you talking about? Farmers spending their whole days in the field, tilling, watering, weeding, planting, builders, building cathedrals, homes, Soldiers, women, baking, kneading, washing, going to the rivers to wash clothes, 
That was hard work. That was tough life. While going to get water so they can drink in the house. That was tough. Not people going to the office on little computers and oh my god, life is so hard, they can't handle the fast. Modern man in their life is so difficult. No, it is the exact opposite. We are spoiled, rotten, we are weak, and weakness breeds sin. And sin breeds death, and death breeds damnation. Do you want to be saved? Pray and fast. Do you want to imitate Christ? Pray and fast. Do you want good things in your life, like the Ninevites? Pray and fast. Do you want God's blessing? Pray and fast. That's it. That's all. I hope you have a good Lent, a, f a Christian Lent, a Lent of fasting, prayer, and alms deeds, giving to those who need it, food, shelter, um, help in any way. All right, that's it, that's all, and I will see you next time. Oh, by the way, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so, and uh, like the video, because all my videos are fantastic, if I say so myself. Um, and that's it. Okay, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.